All right, man, I'm looking awfully yellow on camera today. You know, it's like afternoon and the sun is coming through my shades and like lighting me up, man. I'm not normally this yellow. I'm a nice golden uh, brown, not uh, this yellow sunshine coming off me. Anyway, today I want to talk about something very, very exciting here. React 19 is in beta right now i normally don't talk about things like this like uh, you know beta releases of frameworks or really any releases of frameworks right because to be honest with you i don't care i should say i mean i care in the sense that it is uh you know something else i need to uh, make sure it's going to work with the stuff that i work on right and plus i need to keep up i need to keep up with what's happening with react um how it's progressing, all the new features and stuff come into play. So, right. So I get pretty excited about it every time there's a release about it, right? But at the end of the day, I'm not doing a lot of production apps and these kind of things. So, eh, whatever. All right. Same old, same old. But uh, an exciting feature for React 19 Beta that I'm really excited about, and if we'll uh, come over here and look at the blog post that was recently out, support for custom elements. Now I care. All right. So this was an RFC that went into React 2017, I want to say. Uh, I believe it was supposed to come out with React 17 or 16. I don't really remember anymore. Now, what does that mean, right? We say support for custom elements. Uh, so in React, basically, if you are building web components and you want to use them in React, uh, it wasn't exactly the easiest thing to do, right? You couldn't just attach event listeners uh, via jsx wasn't something that's easy to do um i believe attributes would but properties like objects and stuff complex objects would not be bindable right you have to manually set that yourself um and there's a whole idea of hydration you know you still have to do the hydration bits yourself and everything which i mean you still gotta do this your web components right it's the way it works but the way around this typically was to build some sort of wrapper components uh, with React using your web components. So that you have like a, a, a lot, if you had a library of components, you had a dash React version of that same library because you have these React wrappers you're providing that really just wrap your web components and make it a bit more React friendly for the end user, right? Which it, it works, it's fine. But uh, with this uh, coming to React 19, you're probably not going to need those anymore. Now, I just want to do something special, I guess. And I don't know. It's not I haven't fully tested everything out yet. And I think uh, they do say it has full, um, it passed all of the custom element test on uh, custom elements everywhere. So I'm guessing everything should be work as expected. There are some things here like about server side rendering versus client side, which makes sense, right? I still expect there to be um, things server side rendering that, Maybe some people expect to work that's not going to work because it just you know, can't do that, right? But this is uh, pretty cool for me and for other users of stuff that I work on, which is the ArcGIS Maps SDK for JavaScript components. <laughs> Long name, right? But our map components are web components, and we do have a React wrapper for them. And once React 19 is out of beta and released, we may not need that React wrapper, but it just depends on how everything pans out with React here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this here and show you a little example. Okay, so there is a upgrade guide if you want to upgrade your React applications to the React 19 beta. Um, you know, and for most part, this works. However, the um, I found <laughs> that the definitely typed PR actually had much more detailed instructions than what's in the blog, what's in the blog post, which makes sense. Um, right. So if you go down like TypeScript changes, uh, what's obvious here, which maybe isn't obvious technically, if you just read through it, is that you need the React 19 types, which are not available yet on definitely type because it's PR is still in draft. So the instructions they give you here to do everything aren't going to work out of the box uh, for the TypeScript updates. They have a code mod, and I did run the code mod. Uh, code mod didn't work out of the box. Uh, there's some names. I, I still couldn't get the, some of the changes that they talk about here to work. So basically, you need to create a, a type 
for your components, right? So that they are on, uh, they're available uh, to use in JSX. And there's also this bit here about compiler options here, tsconfigjson. This is the one part that didn't work for me, and I, maybe I can uh, repro it when I show it right now. But it says to change React dash JSX to React forward slash JSX JSX dash runtime. Wow, that is difficult to say. Um, but you should be able to do that, which I couldn't do. So if you go to the definitely typed PR, there's actually a few more uh, some details about how to get the types you need. They tell you here, if you're using Yarn and PM, you can do, uh, or I'm sorry, Yarn and PM, PM, you can do the dependencies to uh, types React Alpha, and there's one for uh, NPM, so you get the overrides in here, right? And then it's got a lot of the same instructions um, that are going to be in the blog in terms of the TS config and the JSX namespace and all that stuff, right? So, okay, okay, who cares, whatever. Uh, let's get down to brass tacks and talk about changes I had to make, right? So if I come to my TS config in here, uh, I did not make the JSX change here. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a second here. But if I come to my um, source file, I did have to add a global for my components, right? So I have to create a, uh, I get the JSX type from ArcGIS map components. I create an interface. Um, this is one thing I had to do here is there's new syntax for event names using custom elements. So it's not going to be on and then uh, camel case event name. It's on and then if the event name starts with a lowercase letter, it's going to be a lowercase letter, which you can see uh, here, right? Uh, on ArcGIS view ready change. And it's not a capital A, it's lowercase a. So I have to map that using a type to the JSX types that we've got in our components that have the uppercase, right? So um, that's one change that we'll need to look at uh, going forward with the map components. Once React 19 is out of beta is how to get these types uh, correctly uh, and available uh, for users. And then I have to go ahead, declare the module React, namespace JSX, and then uh, update the intrinsic elements uh, interface with the ArcGIS map one using the local um, type that I've got for that, right? So, okay, so this is a little bit of TypeScript stuff you gotta do to get your custom elements to work, or at least I did to get my custom elements to work correctly. And I can also do it for, if you didn't have types already for your custom elements like I do, then you can just define them all in here, right? All the different properties, the event names and everything else that you need to use. You can just make them all uh, available there. Okay, so what does the code look like now? Now I don't have to bring in a wrapper anymore. I can just go ahead and directly load my custom element, like ArcGIS map. I can still pass a complex object because this is not server-side rendered. It's just a client hydration happening here in this simple V application. I got my pop-up config, and then here's my event on ArcGIS view ready change, right? So if I come over here, and there we go, there's that ready event that comes to log there off my regular on ArcGIS view ready change event, right? So let me just kind of show you what happens if um, I don't have the global, right? So if I don't do uh, the global stuff, so let's just say, let's go ahead and remove all this. Right, so now property ArcGIS map does not exist on the type, so, okay, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and undo that, all right? So just extend it, right? So this actually gets me kind of the way. So what happens here is that it does define the ArcGIS map uh, type, right? Is the uh, ArcGIS dash map, but the property on ArcGIS view ready change does not exist on type ArcGIS map. Did I mean to use blah, 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 the camel case version, right? So that's why I had to go ahead and do this here to get my uh, typing correct. So that's just on um, component authors when they do their types for JSX. Probably for a while to have backwards support, we're gonna have to have that uh, capital case as well as probably uh, the lowercase uh, typings. I don't know, I, I don't know. We're gonna, uh, on our end for the ArcGIS web component stuff, we're gonna have to figure out how we're gonna do this once React 19 is out of beta again. And nothing we're jumping into right now, but we just want to make sure that everything worked as expected, right? So this is cool. This this means I don't need to 
uh, have a React wrapper if I don't want a React wrapper. And let me also show you too, when I tried to do the uh, TS config JSON stuff that they were uh, recommending here. So the documentation says I should do React JSX runtime, right? And I do have this runtime. I checked my node modules and it, it does exist. Uh, it's just that when I come over here, now my editor complains I'm not using the dash dash JSX flag. And this happened to VS Code too. It's not just a, a Vim thing, but it does build. But I can still run NPM build on this and everything and it'll work. So I, I believe this is just an, an IDE error, maybe an LSP uh, thing. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I, I'm sure this is something that will eventually get fixed uh, at some point before React 19 is out of beta. All right. And that's what I want to share today. Just uh, it's very exciting. The fact that the React 19 beta finally has web component support. Oh, I'm sorry, custom elements support. And that custom elements authors like myself aren't going to have to create these uh, React wrappers uh, for um, users, right? Which isn't really difficult. We've kind of got all scripted down and stuff like that, but it is a little bit of an overhead, right? You have to uh, uh, do a bit of work and make sure that they're all updated. It's another package you have to manage when you do versioning and deploying. Um, and it's just, it's, like I said, it's just a bit of overhead for when you're uh, making these components and stuff. And yes, I know there are a lot of React developers out there that just don't care about web components. There's a lot of people that have issues with web components. They don't think that you should even be using them for whatever reason, but you know what? I don't care. I like web components and I'm a web component author and developer here. So whatever, man, this is cool for me. And that's the, uh, the big news out of React 19 beta that I was happy to see. Right, so um, I don't know when React 19 is going to be out of beta. I imagine it should be soon. There, there's a the new version, a new version of React 18 uh, out. I believe it's 18310. I want to say I don't remember exactly. So yeah, so whenever uh, React 19 comes out of beta, um, you know, I'll be ready to go. Uh, so we'll see what happens at that point. But yeah, I'm excited. I think it's good news for everybody across the board. So, all right, if you got any questions, please drop them down below. Um, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks.